as you said, you know, when you started this process, you didn't intend to even make a documentary, much less one that covered, you know, so many years. How how did you maintain your focus and faith in telling the story? Mm -hmm. And also, what kind of toll did that take on you? I mean, that because that is like, you know, obviously, you, you know, you're not, you haven't, you don't become one of the people who are living here, but that's, that's an incredible amount of commitment. I guess, I guess it's, uh, I, I felt that I was needed. I, I could do something for these people, and I feel that I was privileged to, to help those people. I am very much enriched. I was given and offered amazing moments with these people. Uh, I have it in my heart. I, many of these things are not on the tape because it was no one from outside who would film, but there were some very, very touchy for me moments when, when, when children were asking me, for example, if I would adopt them. And I could not, not offer something like this because I am not a Russian citizen and I could not, I wouldn't be qualified for adoption. Then I had to refuse. And um, I had to explain them. I had to uh, tell them why. And, and then there was one situation, for example, which really strongly motivates, which I am kind of reflecting on in the beginning of the story, but I'm not saying the whole story. But one time I took the group of people to the hospital, and none of these people was accepted. And then the next day, when I came to the garbage dump, this one woman was drinking vodka. And I was, I was very badly mistreated also in the hospital. I went through the huge nervous breakdown. I was sitting in my car. I was crying. I went through this tremendous effort to take the people from the garbage dump, to bring them to the hospital. I was waiting in lines. By the time when we finally were, you know, like I took them to the banya, to Russian sauna, to wash. I, I brought some clothes for them. So all of this was taking like basically a day. And then on the end of the day, no, none of these people were was helped. And they were very severely sick. Some of them, they had gangrene. They had to have the amputee. So for me, this was in unbelievable that this uh, the hospital wouldn't even take the people. And then I went into kind of fight with the security guy who was drunk. He kicked me out from there. And then I was crying in my car. You know, I was crying and crying and crying. I could not stop. And then I had these four people sitting in a complete silence. And then the next day when I came, this one woman, she was drinking vodka. She didn't even look at me. And then I told her, you cannot, Olga, drink vodka. You will die. And she told me, you know, I don't care about my living or dying. Maybe it's better if I die. But one thing which I want to tell you is that I will never allow you to help me again because I cannot tolerate, I cannot take it that you are mistreated like this. It's you kind of going through these hardships. And she died a couple of days later. And I was not able to help her. And, and basically for me, this is something which is a friendship. You know, it's, a, it's a like she cared for me more than for her own life. And how can I repay for something like this? It's impossible. I can make this film. I can try to basically um, advocate for this case of these people or children or whatever. But this is a, I, I think this is something which was for me uh, a very contradictory because maybe people expect that when you go to a place like this, you will be helping people and you down a little bit upon them. And it's something which I have to look up because they are more human. They, they have a greater heart. They didn't lose this most important aspect, you know, the, the, the ability to love, to to fulfill friendship and as I, something I, I can learn from them. It's not that I try to say that living in these conditions is, is better, but the people preserve something. And actually, sometimes we're losing this in our society. We live in this very competitive world. We, you know how it is. You all work in different businesses. And, and you know how sometimes it's difficult, how you are alone in this society oftentimes. And then I, will, I came there and I was embraced. I was comforted. I was you know, hacked. <laughs>